This is Mike with The 21 Report, behind the scenes in Orlando, Florida at the 21 Convention 10 year anniversary event, sitting alongside Jim Flanagan. Jim, you just gave your first ever speech at The 21 Convention. First of all, welcome. Thank you, Mike. It's, uh, great, Appreciate it. Great to have you here. Glad to be with you. Thank you, Mike. So for those mm -hmm. who haven't seen your talk yet, could you give a brief overview of what you talked about? Well, I had, uh, I had the, I, I was going to talk about overall general conditioning and exercisable weights and the uh, more I thought about it with the audience here I, I being young I thought well let me let me give them a little bit of a journey in life of where I went where I started and how I got there and I did that in, in the field of exercise and fitness and uh, then I did give them a little bit of, of information about working out and some things to avoid some things to look at and uh, and learn, study and learn and uh, keep records of what you're doing and so forth. So it was about an hour and I had a lot of great, great questions at the end. So, so, Awesome. So how did you originally get involved with exercise? I uh, became a physical educator. I realized my calling was to coach and uh, it, I, it, it, it wasn't a straight from point A to point B. I got circumvented because I had to pay my way through college. Uh, didn't produce the first year, didn't do the grades. Uh, my priorities weren't aligned, so at, at age 18, so it was a long haul, but uh, got through it and uh, did not get to coach a sport because I got out of school in December and I had to get a job and the only thing available was elementary physical education at that time. Did that for a, a year and a half. Had a summer recreation program I ran uh, in a very nice high-end uh, part of Orlando for two summers and got paid that, but I took the negative turn to a positive. That was one of the key points of teaching young people, no matter how good or how bad you think it may be, if you have a negative situation, turn it to a positive. So I went ahead and went to graduate school at night. I didn't get to coach a sport, but uh, I taught phys ed, worked on my masters, and then uh, I was uh, fortunate to meet a guy named Arthur Jones, who was the inventor of the Nautilus exercise machines back in 1970. I met him in the first quarter of 71 after playing basketball at the local university here. And I was working out at Milo's gym. And that's where I cut my teeth uh, three years before that in 1968. And I thought I really knew what I was doing because I produced some great results. And in 12 months, I put on 50 pounds of mass from 190 to 240. And I uh, thought I knew what I was doing until I met Arthur Jones and my world uh, changed overnight. And uh, that was my journey with him and two companies back to back with a 36 year relationship. So, so you mentioned Arthur Jones and you talk a lot about Arthur in your, your speech, you share some of the stories. I wanted to ask, what was your biggest takeaway, your biggest lesson you learned from Arthur? Well, there were a lot of them. Uh, opportunity only comes by a few times and if you don't grab it, it's gonna go, it won't come back. Something else may show up. So timing is the key. And he always said that the time was right when he introduced the Nautilus machines because he was the first guy in America to take the barbell and figure out the limitations and try to build machines around the functions of human muscles. And everybody else prior to that uh, took the approach of copying the barbell, which made it more inefficient than what it was. And uh, along the way, he found uh, some information about a guy who had started the same thing he did back in the 1850s and 60s in Sweden, a man named Gustav Zander. And he made the attempt to build tools around human muscles for rehabilitation, but it didn't take off because the quantum leap prior, you know, com compared to what was already out there, it was too, too much to, people couldn't comprehend it. And so he later failed. But Arthur Jones did make the attempt, and he succeeded it, and uh, launched that company in 1970 and sold in 1986. Awesome. So, in terms of um, exercise, what are what's the biggest mistake you say most people making in the gym? Uh, Overtraining and misusing the tools that are put forth in front of them are, are two of the biggest problems. Uh, they're over overtraining, training way too long, spending too much time in the gym. It's more of a social thing and they're not getting the results. Uh, I remember some of the lectures Arthur Jones gave, which was hundreds of them over the time. He always said that uh, today's membership in the gym, you buy a health club membership, you buy your attire to look cool, 
you uh, take your supplements and protein powders and uh, you spend uh, three or four days a week in a gym and the results you're producing plus the injuries you're incurring, you'd be better off quitting. Mm. <laughs> so that's kind of an exaggeration. Yeah. So if someone was going to walk into your gym and you're going to put them through a workout, what would that workout look like? Well, uh, you, you would take them through a, a workout with the machines that we have or ba based on muscle functions. You would, uh, you, it, it takes a while, you gotta teach them how to work out. So usually, it, and what I've learned is it takes about, by appointment, 10 workouts to teach them how to properly exercise because most people have bad habits. And uh, that's a learning curve for about 10 workouts. And we average about two a week. Mm -hmm. We used to train three days a week back in the days, but we realized that was probably too much. Because if the intensity is high, your exercise must be brief. If the intensity is high, it must be infrequent. You've got to have recovery. And that's what most people don't understand, that exercise does nothing more or less than provide a potential stimulus to trigger a positive change in your, your body. And uh, most people don't even know about that and don't really understand it. So Jim, this was your first time speaking at the 21 convention. How have you enjoyed the experience so far? Well, I've enjoyed it. I mean, it's, it's a very uh, professionally run uh, program. It's on time. I, I was very impressed with that. And, uh, and I, I think people are seeking information. I can pick up on that. Just a few questions I answered after the talk. And uh, I saw a couple of people during the luncheon. I got here a little early, so I got one of my news. So I sat with him. We had a nice talk. So I think it's a nice, uh, nice conference, nice program. Brilliant. So if people at home watching want to learn more about you, more about your work, where's the best place they can go? Uh, probably uh, the uh, uh, go to facebook.com, thehitexperience.com. Uh, I've got a friend named Luke Carlson who I've got into business about 17 years ago. He's very successful with his business model, his training uh, protocols, and he is really on a proactive growth mission. And I. I actually teach a course with him once a quarter. And I'll give you my email address if you like it. Uh, I can be contacted, uh, initials JJ Flanagan is F-L-A-N-A-G-A-N, JJ Flanagan at CenturyLink, C-E-N-T-U-R-Y-L-I-N-K, L-I-N-K, connected, dot net. And that's the best way to reach me. Right. Really. We'll keep that link down below. So Jim, yep. thanks uh, so much for being here. Thank you for having, having me, I appreciate you. it. So nice to meet you and good luck to you in the future. Thank you very much. So with that said, guys, you can now watch Jim's talk first exclusively on 21university.com. You can also get there by clicking on the link below. This is Mike signing off with Jim Flanagan for the 21 Report. Thank you.